and welcome to the panel, where we take a look at graphic novels and talk about their story, art, and everything in between. On this episode, we're discussing East of West, a comic set in alternate universe, futuristic, post-apocalyptic Earth, and the main characters are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Got your attention yet? So buckle up, Space Cowboys, because we're about to go on a ride. All right, so joining me today, we have some incredible guests. First off, we have cartoonist extraordinaire, Ben Granoff. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for I will on. behave. <laughs> no, it's more fun when we don't. And then Johnny has to deal with it later. Um, <laughs> and then from Third Eye Comics in Annapolis, Maryland, we have store manager, hey. Torma. How's it going, guys? Yeah, I'm Torma. I read a lot of comics. Thanks for having me. Oh, oh. Thanks for coming back and joining us. So we're going to be talking about East of West. So I'm going to give everyone just a general idea of what it's about. So it's set in the year 2064, and, it just, and it's a dystopian sci-fi Western landscape blending technology and prophecy. The four horsemen of the apocalypse roam the earth, signaling the end of times for humanity. But one man stands in their way, the one who should be leading the horsemen, death himself. Betrayed by his former comrades, death seeks vengeance, something that's been stolen from him and nothing will stand in his way to get it back. East of West was announced by Image Comics at the 20, or 2012 New York Comic Con and debuted the following year. It reunited writer Jonathan Hickman with artist Nick Dragota, who had previously worked together on Fantastic Four at Marvel Comics. The first issue sold out in the, weeks of it, in the week of its release, and its first trade paperback edition entitled The Promise topped the sales charts upon its release. So, before we get into everything, when we were talking earlier, you all had, like, your own ideas of what you would call this, you know, like, genre of what this comic, and those were great. So, like, what, what were they again, um, Ben? Um, weird Western. And then the way that I would pitch it as a retailer, God, I sold 100 copies of this book. It's only $10. Because <laughs> that's all American science fiction scripture. There we go. Nice. See, I like that one. All right. And what about you, Torma? Oh, uh, well, whenever I sell it, uh, I always pitch it as a post-apocalyptic, futuristic sci-fi western. Basically like, a, uh, like a, a graphic novel gumbo of all your favorite genres. I love it. I love it. Um, so because you guys are fully informed of all different comics everywhere being <laughs> those guys working in it directly. Um, what were your thoughts going into reading this the first time, you know, having read a bunch of comics? What were your first thoughts going into this? Uh, let's um, start with Torma. Yeah, well, when I first uh, read East to West, I had read, um, you know, his Fantastic Four run, fell in love with that. Um, easily one of the best, like, Fantastic Four runs that Hickman's worked on. And I loved uh, Dragota's artwork when he was working with him in that. Um, when I first saw the book, uh, all the covers are graphically designed by, like, Hickman. And so they have a very striking sort of, like, blam, hit you in the face right on the rack. Um, I was excited. I knew Hickman's stuff. I knew kind of what to expect, but not what to expect in, like, the best way possible. Yeah. Perfect. And what about you, Ben? I knew Hickman by name. I'm not really a new release reader. I have so much love for all the characters, but I can't I can't chase them every month like that. I don't I never had that bug. But I had been it was like a renaissance moment. I hadn't read an image book since the late nineties. Gen 13, Spawn, Max, Wildcats, Mage. I hadn't, I, right? I, I, but I really, if you ask me, like, what was Image up to between this book and that, I'd say Walking Dead, and I'm not sure what else. So I, I saw Saga, I knew it was going to be for me. Read Fatal and Trade, and this was the first ongoing Image book that I had read ever, like, since I was a boy. And I knew, mo I knew instantly, I knew by the time the flashback started, 
uh, the first flashback where they tell you the alternate history that it was going to be one of my like favorite things of all time. And it's in my top five books. Oh yeah. Alternate history stuff is always fun. I mean, you get like, you, you watch the little butterfly effect. Uh, you change one little thing and it just goes across the entire timeline. How like a civil war never ends. Yeah. It's yeah. It's great. Right from the get go. How about you, Mia? How is, what, is it, was this your, your first time or? Uh... This was my first time. I'm not generally a Westerns person. Um, it's not a genre that I'm too familiar with or enjoy, but because I think it, it is that mashup of genres being sci-fi and then the alternate universe is always kind of interesting to see what, what would have happened. So um, this actually got my attention really quickly. Like you said, I was just like the first, you know, part where he's just like pulling uh, yeah, <laughs> everything is just uh, guts and the umbilical cord of reality. Yeah, 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 just amazing. I was just like, okay, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. It's even better. So yeah, definitely uh, got my attention. Oh yeah, well, right from the get go. I mean, any book that starts with the summoning of the end of the world is is going to have my attention. Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of in uh, Raising Arizona when John Goodman. Yeah, uh, inside of prison, and he comes out <laughs> screaming in the sewage and the rain and the muck. Just this <laughs> biblical scene of just like yeah. birth, <laughs> just coming yeah. straight from everything. Yeah, I can see that very Coen Brothers esque, especially with like the Western kind of vibe going out. One of the deals mm -hmm. that I like about this reminds me of The Ring, that movie where like Samara does spirit photography and no one can understand what it is, but it's like obviously supernatural and people are confronted with it. And in this story, because of the way that the Apocrypha and the message wove into all the other religious experiences in the country, it be, um, it's, it's second nature. Everyone, everyone believes it. No one, no one questions. They, they don't, they, no one questions the message because the people in power are, are in on it, you know, so you'll, you'll be, you'll be under the boot if you don't. Yeah, well, they, on. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> much a little later in the book, but you think, well, let's go ahead and um, actually let's jump into the story because I feel like we're going to about to di deep dive into it. So let's go ahead and um, head on into deep diving on the story. So I'm going to give you all some information about the writer, Jonathan Hickman. He's a fan favorite writer in the comic industry. His debut into comics was at Image with the Nightly News in 2006 and Pax Romana in 2007. After being invited to write for Marvel, he wrote the limited series S.H.I.E.L.D., as well as Fantastic Four, The Avengers, The House of X, The Powers of Ten series, and the 2015 Secret War story arc. His other work at Image tit include titles such as The Manhattan Projects, The Black Monday Murders, Decorum, and of course, East of West. All right. So, I mean, this is like the most general question ever, but overall, what, what were your thoughts on the story and how it struck you personally? Um, and we'll go with Ben. What I like about the story is that the puzzle box world building mystery um, is very tantalizing. And just when you feel turned around, it'll give you something to hold on to and send you in a completely different direction. This is just, this is the tip of the iceberg. And like, you know, there's a source book that is, I think it's like the first issue of the fourth volume of fourth, fourth trade that like gives you all the extra info. Yeah, you got to work to get to that yeah. point to it. So, like, this just like this just lays it out like very mysteriously, but accessibly, and leaves you wanting more. Yeah, well, it feels the story itself like it feels very. It reminded me a lot of like Kill Bill when I was reading it, where you have a lot of action, you have a lot of like it seems very linear in a in a sort of way, but. There's so much more, like you said, Ben, that was um, like the tip of the iceberg of really what Hickman wants to do. And you can still, you can read this volume and get a pretty decent start to finish, a, a story of revenge, a story of, you know, uh, something that was taken from a man, but, well, something more than a man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it teases you, but it satisfies you enough. It's like, it's like the chicken wings before you get your entree at like a restaurant, you know? 
<laughs> and you just you just want more celery. You just want um, maybe some more dipping sauce, whatever. But you just know, like the rest of the meal, if this is good, then the rest of the meal is going to be like bananas. I feel like this is a very high contender for like richest lore in such and yeah. such IP. If you were oh, to yeah. like stack them up, this one you can hold it next to Dune or whatever. Yeah, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, I mean, Hickman is he's known for that. He every little letter, every little paragraph is denser than like the densest like pea soup. You know, it's he just pours into every ounce and every panel. Um, the kind of suit that a character wears could pay off twenty <laughs> issues down the line because the threading is making another character allergic or something. He plans it all out. It's 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 brilliant. When you read the whole thing, it. It blows your mind. It's phenomenal. Oh, see, I love that. I love that kind of like Doctor Who as aspect where it's like, you know that they've got the something planned later on. <laughs> yeah. And then I just loved like the characterization, like really getting to know what was going on. There's so much material in this first volume. Um, but you, it does, it leaves you wanting more because you, you kind of feel for the characters, which is kind of interesting to say because of the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Right. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> but it was, it was so interesting to, to kind of think of them as not only, you know, uh, you know, human motivations and human kind of, um, feelings and ideas, but also as like Western characters, like that's kind of craziness. Um, you know, so so for me, it was like trying to pick what character I really felt for, which I, I don't know. what Which character did you guys find the most interesting? Say it on three. Let's all say it on three. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for me, death, right? That's you. You sympathize with Hickman's taking this thing that every everybody fears, everybody like, you know, it's this unending force, this uh, this eventuality of everything. And he makes that the main character. He makes that the sympathetic voice, uh, this force that's been cast to the side, that rejects the message, rejects this message of horseman kind of uh, destiny. Um, yeah, I mean, when, when your hero is the very thing that everybody fears, but then he makes it um, less scary, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like, it's like if they did like a... Uh, Friday the 13th, but then made Jason the hero, you know? It's, it takes the villain and makes them the good guy. It, it builds this different idea of Well, there's, cer there's certainly plenty of bad guys in the book, and I cannot mm -hmm. resist Archibald Chamberlain. He is so delicious, and he has a line at the end of the book that is so absolutely laugh-out-loud funny for me. I can't, I cannot resist him. Which uh which line is that? Oh yeah, it's probably in this scene. It's it's the one where oh it's this first panel right here where yeah. where he starts whispering. One thing I would really love to talk to you guys about is the is the lettering and the use of mixed case font, and an emphasis on sort of capturing more of a standard edited English approach. I know that a lot of old guard guys. Eric Larson, Kirk Busick will, would like talk about how, no, you got to be doing Ames Guide all caps lettering or it doesn't count. To me, this book is as fine an, an example of comics as literature as Spiegelman's Mouse, for example. Yeah, that's something I, I always, um, unfortunately, it, it's something I don't think of until I've reread it a few times, but like the choice of font, the choice of styling, the choice of, you know, what it means. Um, for this Mark Twain-esque sort of character. Um, yeah, Archibald is great. Archibald is a really, really good character. And especially going through, he's um, what, he, he's very delicious, you know, like you said. Yes. You want more and more. You know you shouldn't. It's a decadent. <laughs> That's a good word. It's like a chocolate cake. You're just, you're eating and eating, and you're like, ah, I shouldn't, I really shouldn't. And then it's like, oh, well, it's so good. Why, yeah. why not indulge a little further, a little longer? You know? Right. He and he and Bell Salmon are really interesting together. I'm really curious what you guys think about Antonia LaVey, because for as long as I've known this book for whatever, 10 years, it's whatever. Um, it, I, I find her name to be a little too on the nose, but maybe because she's so obnoxious that it's sort of like thumbing itself culturally. Uh, curious your takes. 
Um, I don't know. I think her appointment and the way that she's appointed uh, to president yeah. becomes almost a separate message of just how easy or how um, unnecessary the title is and more so like the person who can help carry their will out, carry this yeah, for sure. message, keep the, um, what is it? Keep everything standardized, keep everything, you know, just got to follow the, the message. Yeah. Yeah. That's the message. That, gotta that, go. That's... He's got it. Deviating from the path is, uh, yeah. you know, is wrong. It's death. And that's death wants to break the cycle. The other very Hickman thing that this book does is that structurally, the way it uses the titles and the blank pages and the repetition of dialogue from the book as apocrypha in the book that you're reading does create an apocryphal literary uh, effect. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, and, he's, and he's consistent with it. You know, it's very, it's by design, Jonathan Hickman. Right, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, every the every time he has one of those breaks with, um, you know, with the uh, the little uh, sentence uh, that kind of dictates what the rest of the chapter will be, um, it reminds me of those old like in silent films that have those old like cutaways setting the scene, and that's I mean that's what he's doing. He's setting the tone. He's setting everything. Yeah, God, Dragota's artwork on this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Frank Martin works with him so well to create mood and depth and we've already talked about how they treat the the flashbacks and we haven't even started the art conversation oh, <laughs> i know i know no, i know oh God. um i actually kind of want to go back to that whole thing that you said about letter the lettering because that's something that i really noticed as well because i think it lends not only to the story itself and but it really shows that the person who's lettering really has um kind of a fondness for what they're working on it's one thing to just do the lettering but when they actually you can tell that they're reading it and they enjoy it and they're wanting to impart something extra to it um was like something that was the best aspect of me for like like reading this um i know john uh, you know he's done so many things um but what would you say like was the strongest aspect of this story as far as like his writing and how it might differ or be the same or yeah, or be the same. Um, the strongest aspect of his writing or how it might differ. Uh, I would say the way that he can lay out uh, a scene and have you think that it's just... Or he can lay out something where you can think it's like A to B. Um, and then issues later, you realize, oh, he really was showing you not just like start to finish, but that it's a bigger piece of this puzzle. I like, while I'm reading Hickman, I always like looking for those pieces of the puzzle that I, I know he's building towards, but I don't know exactly what yet. I know how the picture, I have an idea or I kind of get where they're going with the story, but I don't know exactly. And that's part of the, uh, the journey. It's always a really fun like journey to go through uh, Hickman's work, whether it's East of West or even um, Pax Romana. Red Wing is another favorite of mine. Red Wing is like uh, Star Wars meets Doctor Who. And it's the world like in the future being invaded by an alternate reality. It's, it's crazy. It's good stuff. But I, I like that ride. And I know that Hickman, I don't know. I, I know it's always going to be a good roller coaster ride. What about you, Ben? Um, I, I don't have enough of a, a point of reference. I've read maybe a dozen Marvel books by him. I really, really enjoyed the Manhattan Projects, but it took me a while to warm up to it. And I was in the middle of the second volume in public and everything clicked and I fell apart and I couldn't stop laughing. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I think that it's really tough because I think that all th three slash four of the people working on this book are very clearly in sync and complementing each other. And that, I would. I wonder what a version of this book looks like if the art team isn't so outstanding, right? And you know so together I mean? on everything. Like I, 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 I since I like, could you sell these ideas? If I don't know. So it's like with with Hickman. If I were a super Hickman devotee, which I'm sure, sure, I like this book a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say. I, I, I would say. Um, 
I, the puzzle box structure is is also what I enjoy. That answer. Sorry. Oh no 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 <laughs> no no that, that's I, all right. I mean it's the same answer, so I you know I like it. Well, here's here's what I'll say is that as someone who's not a ongoing new release reader, I was able to read two, uh, Secret Wars 2015, like the first. Love, love 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 Secret Wars. I read the first four issues of that, no problem. I maybe had read New Avengers Volume One and said, okay, this is what this is about. And I read half of the miniseries and I said, thank you for holding my hand as person who's fond of the characters, but not the continuity. And then I couldn't follow it anymore. That's on yeah, his, his Avengers run. His Avengers run does a similar thing where it builds and builds and builds from the very first story arc all the way to the end. Um, what I like about his new Avengers stuff is his Avengers book is definitely a Marvel book written by Hickman, but his new Avengers reads like a Hickman book that just happens to be in the Marvel universe. If you can, um, if you can read that, that's, I would finish that to the end. Cause they get into like parallel realities, a lot of like the Manhattan project stuff. Uh, Manhattan projects takes a second to get into too, which I think is good and bad because once it ramps up, it starts going up like crazy. Yeah. But and also, e yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Once you see Pitara's range as well. Nick Patara's oh, once you see Nick Patara's overall range outside of that book, oh yeah, you realize, oh he's drawing it ugly and stupid because it's an ugly and stupid comedy, yeah, and that's and that's when it like clicks together, right? And you're like, oh, that's why. That's why everybody <laughs> looks so rough and has yeah. dimples, and when they zoom in on their faces, it looks all gross, and you can see like every line. Yeah, yeah. no, it's um, he always chooses the right artist, or at least has the right artist working with him. Uh, I know for his Fantastic Four run, uh, Dale Eaglesham, who has an yeah. amazing, almost like Silver Age kind of style to his work, uh, was working with him for most of that book. And that, that runs phenomenal, too. But yeah, uh, Dragota on this like has that anime style that you want, has a very almost like manga-esque take on the characters. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's gorgeous. And I love how each of them each of the horsemen have their own distinct like color. So even if they're like a little kid or in the flashbacks, when you see that, that they've aged, you know who the character is to some degree, you know what to expect, even from these just couple of panels here. Yeah. My favorite yeah. one is how death goes from having black skin in the yeah. flashbacks to white skin. And as, yeah, yeah. He, as, his, as his, as his heart is melted and all, all this stuff. Exactly. And I think it's, it's nice too, that, like the horsemen are the only ones that have like just solid colors. There's not a lot of like, what's the word? There's no gradients or anything to their shades. Their, you know, war is red. You have conquest green and then like death is white. Death is, um, you know, well first black and then white, but they're unmoving. They're, they're not people. They're forces of nature given shape by um, the plots around them. No, I, I thought it was yeah. good. I, I I love the book. It's yeah, yeah. It, yeah in, definitely in that, left. So oh, go ahead. I'm so sorry. In that way, <laughs> no, if, you're in, if you're familiar with Sandman, then this is no this is no problem. If you're not yes. familiar with Sandman, it might you know it's going to take a minute. I didn't think of it like that, but yeah, they're very like it's very like endless, uh, where you don't have. It's not a a Bruce Wayne or a Steve Rogers or you know, a Peter Parker, it's just an idea, an idea that for us to comprehend, they've given it legs and arms and a face and a mouth that we can understand. Yeah. It's like a, a Western Sandman. It's a good way to look <laughs> at it. <laughs> now, I really want to deep dive into, into the art because like you said, you really, it, it's a decisive pick on who the artist was and it works so well um, for this. So let's go ahead and start talking about the art. A little background on Nick Dragota. He is an artist who has done work for Marvel, DC, Dynamite, Boom, Image, basically everyone. Some of his notable works include for Fantastic Four, Amazing Spider-Man, Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, Ghost Cage, and he's the co-creator of America Chavez. Yeah. Vengeance. That was wow. a good series. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. So 
overall, like for me, like you said, the the usage of color was something that really struck me because it's such a strong way to make a point without, you know, having to go too deep into it. Um, what did you all think of the the art in general, like um, his style in terms of the comic? Uh, I love with like with any art, I love the use of line, um, but I love the use of thin lines. Uh, whether it's to like dictate uh, like the smoke or just I love how barren the world can be and then so complex at the same time. And I think it's it's hard for an artist to effectively jump between both extremes of a populated city and then a, you know, just a rocky face, like just making a, a desert look like a desert, not just like a pile of Play-Doh, I feel like is really, really hard. And Dragota does it uh, phenomenally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all the uh, like intricacies of the tower, uh, the like you can you can almost hear it and feel it. It, it has like its own sort of um, hum to it. You can picture like the animation. You see the ships flying around in like unison. You can hear the um, the spark of the electricity. No, Dragota's stuff is phenomenal. It's really good. I'm surprised uh, he hasn't done more work for Marvel. But then again, I wouldn't get to see cool, like unique stuff like that as, as frequent, I would think. I think he's got, what about you, Ben? well, first of all, I feel like I would love to know like a few artists that you guys really hold on high. Cause it's easier to set the meter against. But we'll, we'll get to that. There's a lot of things I like about your work here, but Frank Martin, again, like it really, it's so collaborative, best colorists color it the way the artists would. And I think that they're, they're making that happen. Great blend of like Mobius and anime. One of my favorite things is how simple the shapes are on like the ships and like the flying things. It's all just rect rectangles and rectangles and cylinders. Mm -hmm. And so he's very specific about where they're moving. Really creates that like motion capture, you know, ILM Star Wars kind of feel where you can feel where the ships are going. I would love to see him do aerial combat. That's what I was thinking about when I yeah. when I read this. But my, Enemy my Ace favorite... or Guardians of the Galaxy or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like my my favorite moments in, in this with the art and storytelling are like when the president gets his knee shot out and the panel that the bullet rips through his knee is the letter A of the sound effect. Or when at the climax, when <laughs> his horse is like bleeding laser fluid from its eye and like jumps <laughs> back. <laughs> so I like sold like yeah you know, done like the thing is like the next nine volumes could have been terrible and i'd still say this book is amazing that's the one right there what a yeah. what a sequence I so know. dynamic just screaming like uh, this <laughs> this horse robot cannon thing that just all it can do is just release energy just blasting all over the uh what is it the new dynasty of uh mao it's the, the pra yeah. yeah it's um yeah, you mentioned like what artists I like. Uh, George Perez uh, is my favorite. I love how he you, can fit detail. You look like, like you look like a George Perez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. We had him uh, in the store, and he um, when he saw me, he's like, "Oh, are you a, are you a son that I did not know?" Yeah, like oh bald beard. It's a, it's a common look these days. That's good. Um, but I love the uh, the detail that George could do. Like he, you could give him a quarter, and he could fit probably like the Avengers, Avengers West coast <laughs> and like the X-Men and be able to draw all of them on there. And you'd know exactly, Oh, that's Nightcrawler. That's Hawkeye. That's um, America Chavez, you know, whoever. Um, yeah. And Dragota has a lot of that same detail, the little Raphael Grumpa, like Jeff Darrow esque sort of mm. dots that add that little layer of depth, like on their armor here, you can see like, how the tiniest of scuff has just like a half circle and it gives so much depth to the entire like story and character. You can see almost every feather on the crows of crow. It's um, yeah. I mean, you're good. I don't think he gets enough like respect for what he does. Yeah. Look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah. Th yeah. Re really. Well, I, w I always wish that that, that that crow is breaking up the panel border a little bit. Yeah. Ah, but making that's, it more like yeah. organic in a shame, way. Shame, like, Nick. Yeah, like a little more, yeah, a little more dynamic. But everything about it—that's the thing. Like, I love to nitpick on this because it's like the best thing I've ever read in my life. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Well, you have a—I guess you have a better eye for um, the like the artist side 
Uh, a different I, interpretation. I like to talk I mean, about it. Yeah, 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 you're you're in it more so, but yeah, it's um, that'd be good. I I, I kind of like the way that it's blocked off, um, because it makes you feel like you're kind of peering into this window of like another reality. It doesn't completely mm. draw you in or lose you through the action. Um, oh yeah. Speaking of another reality, when you guys were talking about. The, just like getting the right artist for these projects, that's a very Grant Morrison type quality. You know what I mean? That you can, that that synergy creates real magic. Right. Yeah. And it's like, is is Hickman finding these artists and then coming up with the stories for them, or mm. is it more collaborative, like a, like a Brubaker of Phillips? You know, like Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips. Uh, they do a lot of noir stuff that's like perfect for each other. Um, Dragata. I can't imagine like Patara or Eagle Sham or everybody else doing this because East of West has such a kinetic, almost energy to it that it just has to keep going. You keep wanting more and more uh, coming back to like, like Kill Bill almost like you see yeah. the bride go on her journey uh, from start to finish. And then right when you think you get to the end, you see, oh, there's way more to this world than I could have even imagined. Yeah. Okay. Also, like and Kill Bill, they were very transparent about what the structure of the overall thing was going to be. Yeah. They told you from the get-go, this is what you can expect from this book in terms of length and this, that, and the other. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, but yeah, as far as like the art goes, even from, even from the covers, even from just like the you know, graphic design here, this is, the, um, this is a hardcover they did for New York Comic Con. But even that, like just having a different striking visual and just like all blank, all white, it draws your eye to that. And you're like, what is this? What is this like sci-fi tome that I found from another dimension? What is this world? And I, I love this. Help. The um, the sound <laughs> effects taking up the entire background. Yeah, You only get like a hand here or a foot here. But the sound effects let you know just how chaotic and full of violence and rage that the scene behind them is that you don't even see. But it... You know, I'd argue it's even more effective than just showing like limbs and viscera. Yeah, yeah, you just see the after effect. Did you guys yeah, enjoy the say... trapper character? Sorry, I'm so I'm so sorry. Oh no, no, what's up? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I ran <laughs> sometimes too. No, no, that's strike too. <laughs> Mia, please, I forget I said it. No, no, you're fine. I was gonna say, you know, for me, I I tend to like, I guess, more um, like I guess cleaner like art like dan mora or like scotty young where it, it's not as lined so because for mm -hmm. me like when um a panel is very involved and there's like a lot going on it, i tend to get really overwhelmed um but because the way the artwork like that panel that you showed um johnny where um with the wording in the background and it just that to me, I feel like in another comic would probably be like, ah, there's so much going on there, but it all works together. Um, and I think that's something that is really special with the artist that it's like he can put so much into a panel without it feeling overwhelming, if that makes sense. No, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you you still feel like you have the space to breathe because it's not it's not a million different characters. It's not you don't see, you know the fist going into the face or anything like that. You just see crack a boom down, blah, 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 like all the sound effects. And it's, you're, you're curious as to like, you're trying to read it. It puts you inside the panel a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's some anxiety in there, but I feel like that's intentional. Like you're, it's a scene where you're not supposed to feel a hundred percent safe with your uh, protagonist. Dracota is very good at composing uh, the scenes in a way that makes it look easy. You can you can see it's like an Olympic athlete. You can see that he's doing it very well and very simply. It's like, oh man, that must be easy, but yeah. it's probably not. It's probably yeah, pole vaulting. I, pole yeah, vaulting like, always looks so easy. Yeah, I'm right. Thinking, like I can do that. I could probably do that. And I, you yeah. know, I know if I did it, it would just fly up, slap me in the face. Uh, you know, if well, I try like, to draw yeah. that, I probably wouldn't get slapped in the face, but I'd probably mess it up way more than well, you wrote. Absolutely. Yeah, go go back to that one if you would, please, Johnny. This one's very direct. The the vanishing point is very very easy to find, and then you've got these other like look frame within a frame silhouette guy in the foreground death boom right there. What a composition! Yeah, no, I love it. The um, 
on the right you have the the gun is the largest thing in there it's <laughs> if it feels threatening it feels intimidating like the, this presence is still there even with death and death is so minuscule and tiny yeah That's he's a such point. a He's such a phenomenal, like, androgynous anime character. Couldn't help <laughs> but admire, like, his gloves and his wrists and, like, the way his, like, the boot cut would, like, fit his, his shoes. Like, very stylish guy. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. It makes you, you know, you it, it adds a little charisma to just the, uh, the walking embodiment of death. <laughs> yeah, very true. Okay, wait. So I wanted to quick uh, put in, we have a, a couple comments from list uh, watchers it says this is my favorite comic of all time from skip and tosh okay, good uh, nice. also nice favorite skip artist with my favorite writer and favorite car colorist of all time yeah it the way that they work together it's amazing so yeah um yeah now i, I um, wanted to ask oh yeah do you have a particular like moment or panel that really stood out to you oh um, is there one particular one I mean, mine was like the bird because that was just to me like, okay, this is what we're getting into. Like, and I, I love horror stuff. So I was like, yes, okay, cool. <laughs> the, the birth is a good one. The birth one um, for me, I think it's, uh, what is it? When the, yeah, oh, it's just, it's so gross. And how like you can, yeah, the heat coming <laughs> off of them as they're being born into our reality. It's it's a good way to set the tone, to set the pace and also kind of be like, what the, what the hell am I in the, uh, what am I reading? What am I in store for? Uh, for me, I think when you find them later in the story, the three horsemen on top of um, all those bodies, and they find one guy who's alive, that <laughs> scene for me is probably my the one that stands out the most because it defines them as, you know, playful, but that's just how they are. And in a way, yeah, they are also sadistic. Uh, they're these forces of nature that just do not care and they're going to do what they want to do. Yeah. And then, like, they're trying to teach this guy how to tell a joke. And un unintentionally, um, <laughs> you know, and then he would say the four horsemen who. And there's a funny bit at the end. Got it? Jokes. But there's only three of you. And that's kind of the joke, making fun of them. And then, you know, they, of course, stomp his face in, kill him, and keep doing what they do. Um, but I think that scene is probably my f the one that stands out the most to me in this. What about you, Ben, as you're flipping through the book? <laughs> yeah. so it's tough. It's, 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 it's well, hard to come up with one scene. That's the thing. It's, it's I tricky. got post-its, but I quit after the first <laughs> issue because like, I'm going to waste all my post-its. This is crazy. Right. <laughs> um, the siege on the PRA uh, fortress is unbelievably exciting. Yeah. I, I really like the when they introduce the Chosen at Armistice because those characters – are so delicious. I remember when I was reading The Dark Tower, having a feeling of real fondness and love for Stephen King's Cotet. And I have that for John Freeman, Archibald Freeman. And I remain Bell Salmon. I am Bell Salmon. Skeptic. Oh my God. <laughs> Bell Salmon is unbelievable. John Freeman, the way that the the way that this blends Afrofuturism with Americana is so like so many other design choices in this book, J Nick Dragona makes it look like, oh yeah, here's another amazing idea. I'll just pick off the tree for you. It, like making it look easy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a gumbo, you know, you have the right amount of, uh, you know, pork or chicken or salt or whatever. And it seems like it wouldn't have the most impact, but it does. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to yeah. harp on the, on this, uh, on the flash, the initial flashback. Yeah. But that to me is like, by the time I got to this page, the first time I read it, I was sold. Oh, yeah. Th this is like one of the best spreads of comics I've, I could imagine. Well, yeah, a, a never ending civil war, uh, the endless nation yeah. of all the, uh, you know, Native American tribes uniting under one chief of chiefs, the uh, fort, uh, what is it, future free told by, you know, three different prophets. I mean, the whole thing is epic on top of epic. Yeah. Yeah. Lone it's, man, it's, a broken sparrow, one apart, a, a son of night, the first of four, the end of everything. Yeah. The, no, the sequence. Yeah. The sequence where they pick off all the, the political ladder until they find Antonio LaVey. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like when you like when you and your friends you're in like, you know, you stay up late, like, oh man, what if all these things happened? Or, you know, uh, <laughs> it's like action figures with um with politicians. It's crazy. Well, yeah, it, it reminded me, that sequence reminded me of, um, have you read uh, Why the Last Man? A little bit. 
So in the I'm beginning, familiar, when, yeah. you know, when everything's going to hell and they go down the ladder and the next available, like the next most powerful person is the, um, what is it? Secretary of Agriculture. I, I, just, I don't know. It just reminds me of that. It reminds me of um, when you have Captain America, Thor and Iron Man in space and on Earth, it's like, OK, well, we have uh, who is it? Hawkeye, Black Knight and Hercules is the Avengers for a while. I don't know. But don't forget, you got to sub in Frogman. There's always room for <laughs> Eugene. You're There's right. There's always room for Eugene. How can I forget Eugene? How can I forget Frogman? <laughs> I don't think he appears in East of West, but... No, you know, but I, if only. You can imagine what it'd be like if he did, though. He could fit in. He could fit in. Absolutely. But he could fall right in there. The thing about this series is that it could be expanded like into hundreds of issues exploring any of the things on this timeline. There, yep. Like, every panel in that alternate timeline flashback is five gra is five trade paperbacks. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the civil war, the uh, yeah. uniting of the endless nation or the, yeah. I don't know what you'd call it. The endless becoming one, you know, I'd read all, you know, 10 volumes of that. The chief mm -hmm. of chiefs. Yeah. I'd buy the action figure. I buy the t-shirt. Um, and I think Hickman really does a good job of building these worlds that he doesn't really go back to as much, but he could, he, he throws so much out there that, you know, he just sets you on this one path and lets the reader kind of play around in some of the murky parts until he defines it a little better. Yeah, for sure. And and you and it's a very interesting experience to emerge into the light of revelation of like, oh, that's what this is about the whole time. There were times I felt spun around and backwards. You know, this is the sixth, seventh time I've read this book Yeah, where you get to an Archibald Chamberlain scene and he just tells you what's happening. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, it's not. It's it's very straightforward. What's happening? Yeah, he's like, you're you're overthinking it. It's it's yeah. <laughs> it's not this grand grand thing. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it it works. I'm I'm rich. You know, I'm powerful here. I I don't want this to end. I I'm against the message. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get no. some uh, comments here from the audience. Actually, we've got uh, Troy coming in and saying, "I was very enamored with the cityscapes, all the big splash pages of the different buildings, etc." Also, hope you're feeling better, Troy. Yeah. <laughs> he's supposed to be here today, but he's feeling under the weather. And then we have That's another one. <laughs> Skip and Tosh was a really great blend of world building and character moments. They used the Marvel method too. So Nick would draw off of Hickman's small plot and Hickman would go back and add the dialogue. Oh, oh okay. Yep. I didn't That's know that. Very, I didn't realize That's that. a very cool way to work. It's It mm -hmm. opens, opens things up tremendously. Well, I think uh, Ben, going back to what you said, that leads to that leads to the greater like synergy of the book. Because I didn't realize that's how they uh, they structured it, but yeah, if that's the way they did it, that that's why Dragota and like Hickman seem to gel so well. You know, if Dragota is doing more, a little more of the storytelling than what I realized, then it leads to a you know a more epic blend, a better sandwich. You know. And you know what Marvel Method really makes happen is you, no, nothing squished with words and image. You know exactly how much space you have depending on who's giving you the space. I digress. Comments. Thanks for joining the conversation. Who's next? <laughs> yeah. And Troy, Troy, I read this over Thanksgiving and it was kind of the perfect book for it with the alternate history of Americans and Native people. Yes, very much so. It was, it, that was, like you said, I would like to see more of that and like how that developed and, and you know, yeah. that well, would be later in the series when we get into the endless nation and uh it's so cool it's probably one of my favorite it just yeah well when you find out like crow and wolf and their origins and you find the uh father of wolf when you meet him it gets crazy there's a whole other 10 graphic novels that you can do with just that storyline right there um yeah, yeah. Every character. This is like, you know, it, there's, you know, starting in the middle. This is starting at the end. The apocalypse is starting <laughs> yeah. in panel one. It's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. only goes downhill from here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now I want to get your guys' final thoughts. Overall, what did you think of the series? And we're going to get into that. All right. I know it's really hard to summarize such an immense 
hers volume. Um, there's so many things going on and, and so much artwork. Um, what was everyone's final thoughts overall um, after reading this? And we'll start with Horma. Uh, yeah, with with volume one, if if you're not interested in if you're not interested in reading more after volume one, then you you shouldn't read comic books. I mean, it gives you so much in here to want to chew over. It gives you so much that you want to like find out more of when you discover more of the rest of the world, when you discover more of the message and really what it means for everything. It's um, it's a great, like I was saying earlier, it's a great appetizer for a meal that you can just see being really, really good. Yeah. Uh, the artwork, the story, the action, the way that it all kind of works together is it's, it's a, it's a perfect gumbo. It's a, yeah, it's a post-apocalyptic futuristic sci-fi Western gumbo goodness. And I mean, give me the cornbread. I'll have more, you know? I mean, Ben, what do you think? When I was a retailer, this book was $10. Is it still $10? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, it's still $10. Well, I think they tried to change it to fourteen ninety nine, and then it went back down. Um, I I go through east to west like at yeah. least seven or yeah. eight a week. Uh, Get showing out. Yeah. yeah. So I think that um, this book will stand a test of time as one of the great finished image comics of that era. There were a lot that Brian K. Vaughn seemingly ushered in him and him and Brubaker. It seemed like were bringing in all those all those books uh i can't fraction oh, remender Saga, all, uh, yeah. sex criminals uh yeah. some of them are still running yeah criminal yeah, exactly. uh, manifest uh, destiny is still running i i learned yeah. recently <laughs> it's taken its sweet time but yeah i know manifest um, destiny is for sure low was really good uh, shout out troy shout out deadly class also like that and Deadly Class, I think, will go down as maybe the best books of Image of that era and probably one of the best books Image has ever published. Says me, a guy who hasn't read anything, you know, read anything. <laughs> yeah. Read a couple of books, one or there's two. A few, but not, I mean, well, I'm not like a voracious new release guy. So there's like, I don't know anything about, you know, DCU continuity, but I can hum yeah. a few bars if you fake it. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you know, you don't have to. I always say you don't have to read every comic book or every issue of a series to know that you're a fan of it. You know, I, I don't have to eat every kind of pizza out there to know that I like pizza. <laughs> like, it's if, if you like it, you like it, you know? Yeah, Deadly Class. Absolutely. Yeah, everyone in the comments yeah. ushered that in. And, yeah, yeah. and Troy loves Ghost Cage, from what I can hear. And I wish it's you were so here, Troy. good. Ben, I feel, Mia, if you guys I, haven't seen it, well, you got you to gotta read it. We'll have okay. to talk about. It. I feel like it's sort of rubbing my anime tropes in slightly the wrong way, where this one does it in all the ways that I like. This one's like more Otomo. That one's like more Tezuka. I don't know. Yeah, the Ghost Cage is very. Have you seen a? Uh, have you seen FLCL? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's FLCL meets Akira. With a dash of Game of Death, like Bruce Lee, it's I, I sounds like it. great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's fun. <laughs> it's um, it's weird. It's wild. If you, I don't know, if you're just expecting like Gonzo craziness, Ghost Cage is really, really good, and it has a nice message at the end too. And it's not too long. Um, oh, it's an, yeah, it's only three That's issues. Going on my list. <laughs> yeah, and, and the uh, the writer I remember, Caleb G, came up through Comics Alliance like ten years ago. I oh, said, wow. I know that name. Yeah, I recognize that guy. There you go. Shout no, out to that guy. <laughs> shout out to Caleb. Uh, no, Ghost Cage, yeah, if you guys haven't read it, definitely, 100%. It's really good. And Dragota, you can tell, like, it feels like it might belong a little bit in East to West. I don't know if that's just Dragota's art style that does it, but, yeah. I mean, Image is always a fun place to go. Marvel and DC are great, too. I mean, Hulk's my favorite. Love the Incredible Hulk, but, you know, uh, you always need to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I was actually going to ask, what suggestions do you have for people if they like reading this? What should they go after next? If you like East of West, uh, definitely check out Seven to Eternity. Uh, that's another one from Image, Jerome Opeña, Rick Remender. It's a fantasy sci-fi. Really, really good. Um, what else? Well, Ghost Cage. I do love that. 
if you want more Hickman world building stuff, um, Decorum is really good. Decorum is really dense, but in the best way possible. It's Star Wars meets Star Trek smashed together in a Hickman lens pulled through the voice of like Serenity. It's, it's a really epic sci-fi Assassin's Guild sort of story. But if you like East to West, you'll dig that. Um, that sounds awesome. That's really good. That uh, really good. If you want like more Western kind of vibes, Sixth Gun is good. It's a supernatural Western story where there are these six guns, each one giving a different ability. And it follows a guy in search of the final gun and the girl who gets fucked up in this crazy Western epic. There's a, there's a few comics out there you might like if you read East to West. It, it touches up on a few different temples. How about you, Ben? What are your suggestions? Yeah, Ben, what do you think? They got to be comics. <laughs> um, I would say I would say that Titan Comics is doing a pretty good job of re-releasing and doing new Elric of Mel Bonet, Michael Moorcock content. Check those out. There's a new box set, volumes yep. one through four of Titan's new Elric book with the super serious <laughs> digital painting. So that might be cool if you like uh, bleached white, thin, you know, uh, handsome guys brooding and uh, murdering everyone. Yeah, could, that could if be you like The now. Witcher, yeah. Just oh a, yeah, a pale if you like Witcher. The Witcher, yeah. yeah. If you like, if you the, like the, if you like pale, <laughs> uh, you know, elves tearing through uh, elder gods in reality, yeah, it might be for you. You might like it. Who knows? Um, I mean, I I wasn't crazy about Jay Lee's Dark Tower books because I didn't find the layouts to be very compelling, and that's the thing that really excites me. Like mm-hmm. this one's got great layouts, very direct. Um, Oh God! What's uh, Black Hammer has great layouts, very direct. Black Hammer is really good. Um, yeah. Deadly Class, the layouts are super kinetic and innovative. Um, uh, I'm sure that the new Dune stuff that Boom is doing is cool enough. House of um, Trades, yeah, yeah. No, the Dune yeah. stuff is really? good. I mean, oh, but I have to give one shout out to Higher Climbs the Fire by indie cartoonist and rock star Tony McMillan. Nice. It's what if Bob Dylan was the gunslinger, and it's the first book in a prose trilogy called the Bleeding Tree Trilogy. Oh, I'll check it out. Yeah, higher climbs the fire. Yeah, wild stuff. (laughs) Wild stuff. (laughs) Wow, wild stuff. All right, those are some great suggestions. I think we have a couple things in the comments. Let's see. Let's see. BKV did. Finish Paper Girls, which I actually like more than Saga. Fair enough. Also, Skip and Tosh, Ghost Cage shows you how much more storytelling Dragota was doing in East of West than people realized. Absolutely. Which, yeah, which I didn't realize. That's a compliment, though. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, but uh, yeah, definitely read Ghost Cage. It's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's FLCL. It's um, <laughs> that no, makes so going, much more sense now. Yeah, it, yeah, just it's FLCL. It's a lost chapter of FLCL. That's that's just all you gotta like. Just you can hear the 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 dun, 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 while they're like <laughs> fighting coal and hydroponics. Yeah, it's good stuff. Decorum is worth the read for Mike Hud- Huddleston's art alone. Honestly, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, check it out. It's definitely a bigger read. Oh, yeah, 20th Agent Century Men and Agent of World, both by that's, writer Dennis Camp. That's a newer one. That one's really, really These good. Some great suggestions. Yeah. And artists on both will be up for awards. Oh, nice. Maybe there nice. you go. All the information we needed. All right. Well, we're going to start wrapping things up here. Um, this is your reminder, everyone, to pick up East of West at your friendly local comic shop. And if you don't know where your friendly local comic shop is, head on over to comicshoplocator.com and you can find that really easily. And I want to go ahead and let our guests plug anything they'd like and let people know where we can find you on social media. So let's, uh, let's go with, uh, Torma. Yeah. Uh, hey. Um, yeah. Uh, check out Third Eye Comics. Uh, we have locations in uh, Annapolis, Waldorf, College Park, Southern Maryland, uh, Mechanicsville, Shore Pump, Virginia. Um, yeah. Follow us, thirdeyecomics.com, at Third Eye Comics. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at 
uh, at Tormantula. That's like Torma and Tarantula smashed together. But um, yeah, thirdeyecomics.com. Uh, come see me at Annapolis. I'll tell you all the good comics to read. I'll show you what you like. If you, um, even if you don't know what you what you like yet, I'll I'll, I'll show you something. I've read a few books, one or two. <laughs> and Ben, do you have anything to plug, or where can people yeah. follow you online? You can follow me on Instagram at Ben Granoff. That's me. You can read a whole bunch of free comics from the last twenty years of working in New York City at picturesforstories.com. And you can listen to my Grendel reread comic book podcast, The Devil in Detail, uh, on wherever you listen to podcasts. But I do recommend on YouTube, since it is a visual podcast, highly dissecting the art and this, that, and the other one. And we've had everyone from Matt Wagner to Joe Matt to Tim Sale on that one. So that's a good time. The Devil in Detail. Devil in Detail. Awesome. Oh, yeah, really check cool. it out. Well, thank you. I want to say thank you to both. This was a great conversation, probably like the most active one we've ever had. Um, and it was so informative and so much fun. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and for everyone else, if you have a graphic novel that you'd like us to talk about, leave a comment below and your choice could be picked for a future episode. And also, this is your reminder to follow us at Previews World and Free Comic Book Day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, from me and the team at Previews World, just want to say, heroes are a dime a dozen, but comic fans are priceless. See y'all next time. suggestion for a graphic novel that you'd like to see discussed on the panel? Leave us a comment and your choice could be picked for a future episode.